What's up guys, Clutch Mike 37 here. I want to do a completely different type of video today um, and kind of do, I guess, a vlog where I talk to you about my life since I was born, um, all the fun things, the hardships and whatnot, because I feel like if I do this kind of video, I can kind of create a personal bond with all you guys who watch my YouTube videos. And um, I don't know, I just think it'd be kind of cool to do and uh, give you guys some more information on my life as, as it is now. And uh, I've been doing YouTube videos for just about five years now and I really can't imagine where I'd be at without it because it's helped me in so many different ways but uh, I'll get to that later on the video so before I want to do that whole scenario and whatnot uh, I want to see what you guys got for Christmas so comment down below let me know what your favorite present was uh, I'll definitely give some mesh out to some random people but basically my Christmas was great I got to spend with a lot of my family members um, I got some cool gifts I got this awesome sweater if you're friends with me on Facebook which most of you aren't which I'm kinda glad about because I don't know why I'd want YouTube followers on my Facebook because I did that for a while and it was just people posting on my timeline about lacrosse sticks and stuff and I don't know I just kind of use Facebook for friend things but if you don't want to be friends on Facebook by all means go for it so I got this sweater uh, this new GoPro I guess accessory uh, I think it's called the three-way mount or something so basically you can make a tripod uh, one of your handheld mounts so it's pretty cool uh, I'll definitely be using this for a lot of my videos it'll help I guess better videos because right now my GoPro is standing on top of the box it came with and something else so it's actually at eye level. But I can start using that. And another thing I did was I asked my whole family uh, pretty much for just money so I could get into bow hunting. So with that being said, I picked up a Diamond Infinite Edge uh, compound bow and some arrows for it. Um, basically my dad got me archery lessons for my birthday and um, at first I was pretty bummed. I was like, okay, that's kind of kind of dumb I don't think I'd ever be into it but after going two or three times I just I fell in love and I thought it was a lot of fun so I picked up a compound bow uh, finish all my hunter safety stuff I take my actual class in January so I can actually become a certified hunter and go in the fall next year with some of my friends so that'll be cool um, didn't really get a whole lot of things lacrosse related I got the new Hirachi 4 turf shoes which is pretty sweet but other than that it's pretty much my Christmas for you um, I spent a lot of time with my family which is great and uh, definitely one of the better meetings of Christmas is spending time with your family. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to give you guys my whole uh, my whole life story. So let's see how that goes. So I guess it all started when uh, my parents, my mom and my dad, met at a bar one night, and um, I guess had me, which is pretty okay. I guess kind of strange. Um, so I wasn't really planned, but I had a mother and a father um, back in the day. My mom. She had completed college, but she didn't really have a good paying job, neither did my dad. So we lived with my grandparents, who I call Nana and Pap. And that was pretty cool, I guess, growing up in a house with them, because whenever my parents were working, I'd spend a lot of time with them. And it gave me a really close bond with my grandparents, which is um, something not a lot of people get. So that happened until I was about, I want to say five or six, and in between that time, my mom met my stepdad one night, and uh, they started going on dates, and they eventually got married when I was six. So my mom and my dad never got married. Um, my dad never filed for custody. He just said, you know, uh, I want him to have a good life and have him, uh, I guess, choose his own life and who he wants to live with. So, uh, growing up, I saw my dad maybe once a week, once every two weeks. And during that time, you know, I was just kind of, I was young. All I wanted to do was play video games and just hang out with friends and have fun. And, um, my dad, when he was growing up, I guess his parents were very strict. They wouldn't let him do a lot of stuff with friends. Um made him eat super healthy food, made sure he got a 4.0 GPA and things like that. So he kind of put that on me. And growing up as a kid, especially in middle school, um, it's very tough to try and eat healthy every meal and get good grades, especially in middle school where I guess I didn't believe it mattered too much, and it really didn't. But back in the day, or I guess now that I look at it, in middle school it kind of forms your study habits. And um, I kind of wish I would have listened to my dad more because my study habits right now are... Eh, they're not very good. Um, GPA wise, I don't do so well in school just because I don't see a whole point in school, um, which is dumb, I know, but it is what it is. So that's kind of my childhood right there is when I was growing up in that. Uh, but basically, um, how I started playing lacrosse was one day I was at a park with my stepdad and I think my mom and I saw some kids playing lacrosse and I was like, huh, that looks kind of like a cool sport. So I got into lacrosse through that. Uh, my first year ever playing, I got put on a South Suburban team, which is just, they're kind of like looked down upon here in the Colorado lacrosse organizations because they're not very good teams. They're more or less just for um, 
just getting out there and playing. So I did that. First season I played goalie and I was backup goalie. So being a backup goalie in third grade is kind of rough because all I want to do is go out there and play. All I wanted to do was help out my team. And I think most lacrosse players at one point in their life wanted to become a goalie. So after my first season, my stepdad volunteered to be an assistant coach. And one day he got an email saying, you know, he was a head coach for a different team. And uh, they just gave him a bunch of players. And a lot of those players on my team back in the day are now some of my best friends nowadays. Um, you know, you got Sam, who I've played lacrosse with since, I think, um, third or fourth grade. Uh, one of my friends, Kyle, I go to uh, college with. And I've just built a good connection with all those guys, so that's pretty fun. Um, so sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, uh, just like most kids, I was bullied a decent amount. I went to a Catholic school or a private school where uh, most of the kids, you know, you have to pay to go to a private school. Most of their parents were driving Mercedes-Benz and all these fancy cars, and my family never had anything special like that. So I'm not sure why I was bullied, but I feel like every kid at some point in their life goes through it. And 6th and 8th grade was pretty rough for me because that's when I started to, I guess, show signs of depression because I was getting bullied. I hated going to school. Um, I didn't have the Nike Shock shoes, so I, I made fun of for just having, you know, New Balance shoes or the bottom-of-the-line Nikes. But, I mean, 6th and 8th grade, I don't think it really matters, but that's just how things go. And then in 7th and 8th grade, we had a new kid come to our school, and my best friend immediately took to him and started becoming friends with him, which is fine. I mean, everyone wants to be friends with a new kid. Um, everyone wants to help them out. But it got to the point... Uh, but it got to the point where um, I guess he was belittling me in front of him to make himself look better and cooler in front of the kid. So at that point, I didn't really have my best friend anymore. I didn't hang out with a lot of people, so I just kind of kept to myself. Um, another reason I was bullied was probably because 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th grade, I was probably 180, 190 pounds, um, which being that kid, or I guess that small in that age group, and being so, I guess, overweight, it's pretty, pretty overwhelming and hard to cope with, but that's kind of what happened there. So middle school, played lacrosse on the lacrosse team that was looked down upon by all the other kids. They all played in the Panthers League, which was the team to be on, or the Bandits, or Cherry Creek. Um, so if you live in Colorado, you probably know what I'm talking about. But if not, those teams were the teams where you had to try out, you had to pay a lot of money. And um, because I played on South Suburban, kids thought I was horrible. And quite frankly, I was a kid who would just stand in one spot, catch a ball, and rip it. So didn't really help my cause there. So that's how my middle school life went. Um, like I said, Catholic school, private school, uh, kind of bullied a decent amount. But like I said, most people witnessed that at some point. But... That started to be kind of the downfall for my actual um, actual life in high school. So for high school, my dad, uh, he pretty much made me attend Regis Jesuit High School here in Colorado for a semester. He said, you know, just try it for a semester if you don't like it. You can definitely transfer, but I want you to get a good education, be on a good lacrosse team, and uh, I want to see how he'll do there. So uh, my dad pretty much made me go to Regis Jesuit High School. Um, I wasn't really upset about it. I mean, I was a little bit, but... I had probably two or three friends there, and they're a very good lacrosse team in Colorado, probably one of the top four every year. Um, so that's what I ended up doing for high school first semester. And even there, um, I wasn't necessarily bullied. Uh, it was just more or less I didn't fit in with all those kids because they're all uh, very religious. They were all somewhat preppy, or at least most of them were. And um, I don't know. I just didn't really fit in. So after that, I transferred to Heritage High School where I played uh, the remainder of my high school career and uh, graduated from. Uh, the reason I went there is because I had a couple friends from my lacrosse team in middle school uh, attend that school, so uh, I had a couple friends that would show me the ropes and kind of hang out with me and uh, help me to get to know people. So in high school, freshman year, I was one of the three freshmen to make the JV team because my freshman year we had actually enough kids for three teams, varsity, JV, and a freshman team. Um, so I played on JV for probably half the season, and I just didn't get along with the coach uh, because he was strictly about you know winning games and every player had to play a certain way and he didn't like my style of play and quite frankly we just didn't get along and some of the kids didn't like me so uh, from there I moved on to the freshman team where I just had a blast I uh, love the high school coach there or my freshman coach who is now actually the strength and conditioning coach for the Denver Outlaws um, so he's pretty cool to talk to one of my favorite people in the world so that's pretty much what I did I think junior and senior year I made all conference and um I guess one of my biggest regrets in high school was talking to colleges and not actually, I guess, taking the initiative to go to them, check them out, because I was afraid I was never good enough. 
Um, in fact, my junior year, I was talking to Stevenson about it, and um, their coach said, you know, we'll take you. Why don't you come out for a visit? And quite frankly, I was just, I was nervous. I was a junior in high school. My GPA, oh, well, my GPA was below a 2.5, and 2.5 is pretty much the bare minimum to get into most of these schools. So uh, I was just, I don't know, I was very nervous about it. And if I could go back and change anything, it probably would have been junior year to actually go on that visit and work my butt off to get my grades so I could actually, I guess, be at Stevenson now. But the more I look back at it, the more I don't necessarily regret what I did. So my sophomore year, I committed to a D1 school for about a week and a half. And um, after talking with the coach, after verbally committing, it turned out that you know the scholarship wasn't going to be that much for me because I was just kind of a, a player that would fit in and maybe play junior, senior year. So I wasn't a standard at this school, especially with their committing class, um, or at least in my class. And you know, the school itself, after the scholarship, was still going to be about 35000 a year, 35000 a semester. And that is just, it's way too much for my family to afford. So I pulled back from that junior year. Um, at the end of my junior year, I committed to Carthage College, which is in Wisconsin. And I pretty much was set on going there because they took me. They said I was probably their, I guess, top top recruit of the class that I was in, class of 2013. And uh, I don't know, I just really liked the campus, the facilities were awesome. And after a while, I guess, I decided not to do that because I was dating a girl who was a year younger than me. And my senior year, she was a junior. And I guess you could say we're in love. It was, you know, a high school love, dated for over a year. And I decided that I wanted to stay in Colorado to kind of make that relationship a bit easier. So I applied to Colorado Mesa University, got accepted, and decided I would take my chances and try out for the team as opposed to actually committing to a school and being put on the team. Um, moral of the story is I paid all my dues, got everything set for Mesa, and then we ended up breaking up so I couldn't back out because I'd lose a lot of money, so I just I stuck with it. And um, I made a lot of friends there, and I actually really liked it. I really miss it right now. And um, I don't know, I, I made the team. I was one of the two kids that tried out to make the team, and it was a lot of fun. But after the first semester, um, you know, being a freshman in college, having all these new... I guess experiences of going out on the weekends to I guess you could say parties and uh, just having a better social life my grades slipped horribly because you don't have your parents making you go to class they don't call you if you miss class like they do in high school and quite frankly most professors don't even care if you show up um, so I messed up first semester and uh, I had to take second semester off from the team and focus on grades as well as an injury I had but I redshirted so I still have four years eligibility um, so that happened so then that summer, I transferred to Metro, which is where I'm at now, and um, I'm happy and very sad about that decision because, well, I'm happy because the lacrosse team, I've met a lot of cool guys, and um, being home is pretty nice, don't have to pay for room and board, free food, and I'm around my family all the time, but I'm also sad because the lacrosse team I wish I was playing at was, I guess, a higher level of competition, but it is what it is, and I'm just happy I'm still playing, so that's where I'm at nowadays. Um... So I guess that's kind of my life, um, or I guess the crosswise. Through high school, I guess I feel comfortable sharing this with you guys because, you know, it's just me behind a camera and I don't actually know most of you, so I feel like I can tell you guys this. But in high school, um, I wasn't necessarily bullied um, at all, really. I was just, you know, very depressed from 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, and life just didn't seem to get too much better for me. So I think it was sophomore year, I told my parents about it. I actually told my girlfriend at the time, and uh, her mom talked to me about it. And I don't know, I guess it's easier to tell a girlfriend about your depressed, I guess, state of mind as opposed to your parents. So I told them about it, and they told me, you know, you need to tell your parents. So um, I told my parents, we went and we got medication for depression because I guess I was diagnosed with it. And uh, one of the, I guess, shadiest things that's ever happened, one of the biggest things that's ever happened to me was... While having that medication, my mom didn't necessarily believe me in it, and my grandma pretty much convinced her to switch out my medication with something else, like vitamins, uh, because they didn't think that medication would help, and they thought it would make it worse. And during that time, I was taking the medication for about two or three weeks, which was just vitamins because I switched it out. And it just, I don't know, I guess it made things worse because I was taking this medication I thought was the only thing that would help me. And it wasn't because it was vitamins, and it just it made things worse. And I actually um, had some very dark instances and dark times. I don't feel too comfortable sharing to you guys just yet, but um, I don't know. I think it was my junior year. My mom actually admitted to telling me that you know she switched out my depression medication with vitamins, 
And since that day, I haven't really been too fond of her. That's why I live with my dad now. But that's that's kind of why I moved out my my mom's house. And um, since that day, I haven't really gone for medication. I haven't talked to anyone about it. I haven't opened up just because I don't feel comfortable with it. And I don't trust anyone anymore. I just kind of have these big, big trust issues with it all. Um, I feel like I should tell people. I told my best friend some of the stuff, but at the same time, uh, since I've just been kind of keeping it back for so long, it's kind of eating me alive, and I don't feel comfortable sharing it with people, but I figured it was time to upload it to YouTube because uh, a lot of people think I'm just, you know, a lacrosse player, uh, an entrepreneur, and I just have a fun life, and I mean, I do. I love my life, but at the same time, everyone is secretly hurting from something. I, I just know it. I mean, I've had depression f since... I guess you could say since 6th, 7th, 8th grade, um, a lot of people say it's impossible to get that, but that's why I started showing signs of depression, and I guess it didn't really hit me hard until high school. Um, everyone's dealing with something on the inside, and it's it's very hard to open up about it because, um, at least I think it's, it's hard because you're scared of people judging you, you're scared of people not believing you, and um, I actually told one of my friends in high school about it, and they didn't believe me, they made fun of me, and they exploited my whole... I guess, dark secret to people, and it just kind of ruined me and ruined my trust issues. So it's definitely something that's super serious. And um, if any of you guys are ever experiencing something with depression, and you're constantly sad, you don't have anyone to talk to, please, by any means, feel free to email me or message me or something. I will do my best to reply. It's just, it's very hard to talk about it to people. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's hard to trust people with it. So... Like I said, everyone has a dark past. Everyone has some secrets they're keeping in. And I guess everyone's different. Like, people say that if you talk about it to a therapist, it helps. If you take medication, it helps. But, you know, I talked to a therapist twice, and I absolutely hated it. I hated sharing my secrets with someone. I had no idea who they were, and I didn't even know them. And I have trust issues because I got the medication, and I thought it would help. But my mom switched it out, and my grandma convinced her to. So, there's that. Um, I've had a dark past. Everyone has, but same time, I love my life. And I feel like it was necessary to share with YouTube since it is the end of 2014. And um, I'll get to my New Year's resolution at the end of this video. So, everyone has good and bad years. Um, I mean, obviously, every year some good things happen, some bad things happen to people. And they outweigh each other and kind of make your year either really good or really bad. And if I had to say, I'd probably say that 2014 was a uh, fairly rough year for me. Um, in February, my mom's cousin, I'm not sure how that relates me to her, but I just call her cousin Corey anyway. Um, she had passed away from cancer um, in February while I was up at uh, Grand Junction at Colorado Mason University. So um, they, she passed away. I didn't, or I wasn't able to come down and see her before it happened. I wasn't able to attend her funeral because I think it was right before or during finals week. So she was the first person in my family that I actually had a connection with that I met that ever passed away that I can remember. Um, I think when I was five or six, my stepdad's um, aunt, so however she's related to me, she passed away. But being five or six, you know, you don't really grow a bond with a person that is from your stepdad's side or your stepdad or stepmom's side of the family. So I didn't know her too well. Um, so she passed away. I went to her funeral, but I was six, so... I can't really recall my memory and how I felt during that time. So, what, 12, 13 years passed, and then um, she passed away from cancer, which really took a toll on me and um, really affected me deeply. So that happened. And then, uh, not too long ago, the probably the worst thing in my life to ever happen, happened. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, when I was uh, born and growing up, my parents didn't have a lot of money, so I was living with my grandparents, and whenever my mom and my dad were out working and uh, making money to eventually buy a house, um, I was living with my nana and my pap, which is what I call them, and um, it was very nice. I got to grow a very special bond with both of them, and uh, November 8th, which was six days after my birthday this year, uh, my grandpa passed away, and it was um, <coughs> it was very rough for me because... Um, I got a call one night, I think at like 11, the night before, my mom called me and told me, hey, uh, you should probably come out of the hospital, Pap isn't doing so well. So of course, you know, I'd hop in some jammies and stuff, freak out, get in my car and drive downtown. And um, I got to spend a couple moments with him, it was probably three or four hours, 
And uh, actually, he talked to me a little bit, which was awesome. Um, I'll get into his death in a couple minutes, but that happened. And then the next morning, my mom called me at about 6.30 or 7 and said, Hey, um, he's not going to make it. So they're keeping him alive to make sure everyone can get down there to uh, talk to him and see him before he passes. So you should get down here as soon as you can. So I rushed down to the hospital. And that day, we actually had a lacrosse tournament, 10 our fall ball. And uh, I ended up missing the first game, but luckily the uh, college we were playing at was right by the hospital, so I was able to make it to the second games. But um, I, I, it was the first time I'd ever watched someone pass away, and it was very rough. Sorry, I'm getting getting all emotional, but um, you know we spent probably three or four hours there just kind of talking to him and um, being in a room that was very quiet and. I guess thinking of all the memories we had of him and watching him pass away. Ugh. So that was probably the uh, the hardest thing in my life was watching that happen. Okay. So that happened, and then um, it's probably an hour after it happened. I went down to the. Uh, the college with my team and played in the last two games of our tournament which was um it was very difficult but I did it and uh, I was proud of myself sorry I had to go take a break um but I think the greatest thing to happen out of his passing was um like I said he had been battling it for 10 years now and um he was hardly ever able to come watch me play the cross which was I guess very special for him, very special for me as well. And um, I'm not sure if you guys believe in God. I don't really, um, I guess, believe because, I don't know, I don't have a reason to. Uh, I'm not too religious, even though I went to Catholic school for nine years, but that's a different story. I really don't want to get into a huge debate on religion because I don't care if you guys believe or not. It's just everyone's different. So um, anyway, if you guys do believe, which I kind of do, but not so much, um, now that he's physically gone, he can spiritually wash me from above and, uh, I don't know, start watching me play lacrosse again, which is, uh, pretty special to me and it makes me, uh, makes me happier. So, um, that was probably the hardest thing of 2014 and what really made my year, I guess, a bad year. Man, I, I can't even make this video without, uh, tearing up and making my horse or my voice all hoarse from it but you know that was pretty good um it was horrible but now that I see it you know I'm done living in the dark with it and uh I'm gonna start crying hold on Whew. knowing that he's able to watch me play lacrosse again is pretty awesome uh, but other than that I mean I'd say I had a pretty pretty good year um I'm at a new college, living at home, have lots of friends, and um, I know getting into bow hunting like I showed you guys in lacrosse, but it's pretty cool. So as 2014 comes to an end, I want to thank you guys for sticking with it, um, watching my videos, even though you know they used to be fun videos that went to basing everything off of my business and making money and being greedy, and now I'm trying to move back into actually fun videos for you guys. Um, now that I have my GoPro and everything, it's a lot easier to make some fun videos. So uh, I just want to thank you guys a lot for all the support you've had. And um, I don't know, like I said, if you guys are ever feeling down and you want to talk to someone and you feel like you can talk to me about it, uh, by all means, shoot me an email. It'll, I don't know, I'll definitely, I love talking to you guys a lot. Um, just shoot me an email, I'll talk to you guys about it. Um, I have no problem with it. I know what it's like to live in the dark and not feel like you can talk to people because uh, you don't want to get judged and you don't want people to, or I don't know, I guess you don't want your family members to know because for some reason it's just, it's weird telling your parents and then, um, I don't know, I guess everyone's different. So like I was saying, if you ever are feeling upset about something or depressed and you want to talk to someone, shoot me an email. I'd love to talk to you guys. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys all had a great 2014. Um, like I said, you know, I had my ups and downs. I'd say it was a rough year, but overall, I'm still alive. I'm still happy. 
Got lots of friends. Got my YouTube stuff going. Got lacrosse. Uh, got some exciting stuff in the future. And I'm excited. So, um, comment down below what your 2015 resolution is if you guys ever have one. Um, as long as it's not something generic like go to the gym and lose weight. I mean, obviously if you are heavier and you want to lose weight, by all means go for it. Um, it's just you see all these people commenting or posting on social media saying, my resolution for this year is to go to the gym, start working out. And you look at them and they look fairly fit, which is, I don't know, to each their own. So my 2015 resolution is to actually start being happier, I guess. Um, I think uh, I'll probably go with my best friend to the doctors, get medication, and um, start taking it. Because, I don't know. Living in the dark and living with depressed feelings and emotions is very rough, especially if you don't talk to someone about it. So, for 2015, that's what I want to do. I want to be happier. I want to be on my way to a happier life. Ooh, my voice cracks. I almost started crying there. Whew. Whew. All right, we're good. Like I said, 2015 resolution, I want to be happier, I want to get my medication, and I want to start opening up to people and family members. Um, because I've lived with these depressed thoughts and this depressed state of mind for so many years, it's it's rough, you know. But I've gotten to the point where I can hide it and, um, I guess, wear a smile and whatnot. So, um... I'm sorry if you guys don't like watching emotional videos. I've never made one before. This is my first time actually speaking aloud about um, all my stuff. So hopefully you guys don't get upset with it. Um, maybe I'll start doing vlogs some more. I don't know. I feel like doing straight to lacrosse videos is kind of, I don't know, it's fun and all, but it gets old every now and then you want to see something that will spice it up. So um, I'll definitely do some archery videos. I don't see why not. Um, Granted, I am, I guess, a beginner, so not going to be very good, but I'll do that. Lots of lacrosse videos. Uh, maybe monthly vlogs, you know, at the end of every month, tell you guys how my life's going, what are, what's going on, things like that. Um, so hopefully if you guys watch this whole video, um, you don't mind me rambling. I'm sure I repeated myself since I've never made one of these videos. And uh, hopefully you guys won't judge me too much for getting emotional and stuff. Um... I don't know. I just felt more comfortable opening up to it, and uh, especially to YouTube, because I'm just a person behind a camera, and eventually you guys are just, you know, people that watch me behind my camera. Granted, I know some of you guys on a personal level, but a majority of you guys, you know, I don't know you on a first level basis, so I can just talk to you about whatever. And uh, I hope I can be that for some of you guys, too. So like I said, comment down below um, what your favorite Christmas gift was, what your favorite part about Christmas and uh, your 2015 resolution, and I'll, I'll give out some mesh. But until then, guys, I hope you had a good 2014. Hope you have fun on New Year's Eve. Be safe, and I hope you guys have a good, tar good start to 2015. I don't know why I said good tart. So, sorry for the ramble, but yet again, thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it so much, and um, I look forward to 2015 and how things go.